we have the uh, the agenda before us. Um, do we need to? Did you want to uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting first, here, Christina? Yes, please. Not on the agenda, but probably it was part of the board packet, so we probably ought to take care of that business first. I move approval. Second. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as printed, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Oh, minutes accepted. All right. So first item of business here, uh, board vacancies, Christina. So um, I forwarded multiple applica applications over. Um, we do have two members, um, both of which are on this call, which um, their term is expiring. Um, I know Dr. Ruddy, you had indicated that you were interested in continuing service. Um, Dr. Nelson, I'm going to put you on the spot um, and ask if you're interested in continuing service. Happy to do, happy to do so. Okay. Um, so that leaves one. Well, if you guys would want to consider keeping those two board members um, continuing their service, that would leave one opening, um, which is for our mental health practitioner. Um, I did have um, a meeting this last week. Um, with comprehensive while we were discussing youth mental health. Um, and I mentioned to them again that, you know, we are looking for a mental health practitioner. They promise they're going to go back and share it not only with their staff, but with um, other providers that they work with. So I, we are still actively trying to um, get that out there. We do have several other applications, one of which I believe mentioned um, that they had had mental health experience, but it is up to the board how you want to proceed. Um, I, from what I'm looking at the application here, let's see. Um, let's see. I don't think it's a credentialed uh, person. It's um, here. Um, kind of uh, that uh, experience. I think we should credential a mental health person because I think we're going to be doing something pretty significant for the next year. Other thoughts? Yeah, I think it was uh, it was Zachary Mallory that you're referring to, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm in agreement with that. So I think, I mean, I guess my, what I would suggest is is that we shoot for a credentialed mental health person and we see what the um, what uh, Christina um, inquiry uh, develops, and we delay this until next month. Comprehensive, which um, now is Burrell, but I mean, still comprehensive to everybody around here. They did indicate that, of course, with their merger, they had been, um, well, very busy this year trying to figure things out and finish the merger and put everybody in place. Um, so they indicated they may have someone who's now available who'd be interested. So maybe maybe that route will work. Um, yeah, the city will continue reaching out. Again, if anybody here knows of anyone, we would encourage you to share the application. So I, I, I tend to agree with the assessments that have already been made. We, we specifically were looking for that individual, credentialed individual. So I think uh, I think a little more mining is probably necessary here to try to fill up that that type of individual. So any other discussion on that item, we'll move on to the 
the one that's probably got Christine's attention also right now with uh, <laughs> what is it? Tri triple demic is what they're calling this thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so real uh, quick, I mean, I know I have to try demic. I have much smarter people on the phone um, to speak about this. Independence, though, for our flu cases, um, as of today, we've had 189 new cases per 100,000 in the last seven days um, for flu. Um, COVID cases, we are hovering between 80 to 100 new cases each week. Um, so, and we have really plateaued. We never saw a dip like some of the other region did, the rest of the region did. We've just continued kind of plateauing right along there. Um, and I can say, you know, a lot of those cases, again, we believe aren't being reported because I just know that there are a ton of city staff out right now um, that are most definitely testing positive for COVID. And then there's a ton of staff who are just out with a really nasty cold um, that they are just incredibly fatigued and um, having problems recovering from. So I'm sure hospitals can probably report more and everyone else, but that is what we are seeing from our end. Do you have any numbers on RSV? So RSV is a non-reportable um, for the state of Missouri. So no, we don't have hard numbers. We have, um, yeah, we have, we know that the cases are up, um, but unless they're, you know, hospitalized and getting COVID and flu and RSV or something like that, we're not getting those reports. So Dr. Nelson may know better. I reached out to uh, one of the local pediatricians uh, a couple of days ago, and his office is slammed primarily influenza. Uh, most in the Missouri numbers are about 90% is influenza A and about 8% is uh, influenza B, and 2% is they didn't check to see what kind of influenza it was. Uh, nationally, almost all of it's A. Uh, their office is slammed with that and RSV in almost equal numbers um, and had a lot to do with since the public opinion is that the COVID issue is a non-issue nobody wears masks anywhere and so now it's cold and we're all crammed into the into the grocery store and into the schools and so everyone's free to to share do you do you yeah, have they're, data they're, if, they're, the, if they're all Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask on influenza. I heard secondhand anecdotally that they thought the the current vaccine seemed to have pretty good coverage for that. Is that true or not? Yeah, nationally, uh, most of it is. Uh, oh shoot, I wrote it down. I can't remember which strain it is, but. It, it's the A H three N two, I think, which is yeah, supposed to H3N2. be three and two. Pretty well covered. Yeah, pretty well covered with the current vaccine. So and remember in a good year if you get seventy percent effective coverage from the influenza vaccine, that's really pretty good. It's just unfortunately not historically ever been one of those one hundred percenters. I think most of you know we use, you know, trivalent or even quadrivalent, so three or four strain vaccines. We try to model off what happens in the southern hemisphere the previous flu cycle. And so most of the time we're in the neighborhood, some years better than others. But so I was trying to come off mute, sorry. So yeah, I would say as of Monday, we declared the Tridemic alive and real and independence. We had 270 encounters in our emergency room. As a reference point, we see 160 to 180 on a given day in our emergency room. Uh, it dwarfed anything we saw, frankly, in just sheer numbers. Uh, even back with the January COVID surge. So um, it, it's almost all currently, as Terry was reporting, influenza. Uh, we are seeing some RSV, but it peaked, uh, at least in our pediatric population that uses our emergency room, um, probably a few weeks back. Um, and then COVID is just kind of bouncing around. It's, it's obviously present, but it's not doing anything uniquely 
as far as driving significant hospitalizations or surging. So the big story for us has been influenza. We had uh, more positive influences in the month of November than we have um, in the history of tracking our data at CenterPoint over the past however many years that's been. So very unusual for this early of a run up uh, of influenza and then to come as all of you heard in the news obviously after a really rough really early uh, season with RSV mostly in the pediatric population that started back in October. So we've been using a lot of um, contingency plans just to manage volume. Uh, we're fairly full in the house right now. Um, our issue is just like you've heard me report for a really long period of time, unfortunately. It's not physical beds still, it's staffed, it's staffed beds. Um, and just like the community, when um, the rates go up, our staff go down, as was already alluded to as well. So we're, uh, we're working to stay above water, but it's uh, really challenging. I think the epidemiologists are trying to sort out if this is going to be some sort of a sustained phenomenon or if it's going to ease and maybe we're going to see a, a biphasic tridemic where we get through kind of an early first surge, first surge and then maybe a, another January, February. So I think there's a lot of thought that nobody's for sure other than it's just been incredibly busy for December 1st already. Yeah, it was interesting. The uh, If you looked at the state of Missouri data, this was the earliest peak uh, since 2016. Uh, and it's just taken off gangbusters. So uh, two weeks ago was the last report, and they would had uh, 13,676 cases, 5,000 5, of which was that week. So, uh, and that's two-week-old data, so. Yeah. Yeah, we had a couple hundred positives in the month of November. That would be a typical, you know, pretty usual January or February and just sheer positives. Just like you said, Terry, not everybody necessarily gets tested. They may be in for other symptoms, but just having 200 positive influenza tests um, in a short month is really unusual for um, us. And then we had a mix of RSV and COVID and then just other viral syndromes like Christina was describing, just myalgias and feverish, shaky cold symptoms that um, seem to be nonspecific or at least not identifying on the typical strains we have the capability to test for. So any other news on that front? I, that was the primary issue that we thought we would discuss and its impact on local health professionals. And it sounds like it's having significant, uh, and you already have staffing issues to begin with. And so you add that to the mix and um, it just makes for challenging times. Yeah, you know, we were, we were feeling, we were feeling like, it's Daryl again, sorry. We were feeling like we were getting, you know, a little bit of relief. We come you know, with just devastating mortality indices from that last surge of Delta before we transitioned to Omicron. And then we had a really rough kind of late spring just with a lot of ambulatory illness from the, the Omicron variant in kind of May, June. Then it seemed to settle a little until kind of this RSV popped. And I don't recall, Terry, I don't know about you, but I don't recall that really being uniquely projected. There were just the projections, as you alluded to, about cooler weather, people being inside and, you know, just a less, less attentive to the um, common infection control practices. So um, well, I think it was, it was in the making. We just weren't sure how significant it was going to be. Uh, 2021, the pediatric influenza was almost non-existent and, and, and adult, adult health care too. And it was because people were still masking, people were afraid of COVID. And so you just didn't have much influenza. And so I think people have kind of really let their guard down and that's why it has reared its ugly head so badly. Uh, the COVID hasn't gone away. We're still admitting, this was last week's data, 565 people get admitted in the metro area per week. Uh, that's 81 per day approximately. And, at its lowest back in April, they were admitting about 49 or 50 a day. So it's uh, st still there, about 66% are those of us over 60. 
uh, but 20% or so or 40 to uh, 59 and about 13% 18 to 39. Um, so there's are, still people sick enough to be in the hospital. Are many of those getting admitted now? Are they non-vaxxers or vaxxers? Well, uh, uh, one, one of the last things Tony Fauci said was uh, people, almost 100% of the population has either had vaccine or had COVID. So uh, the, whether or not you had or had vaccine or not, uh, the, the problem is that vaccine isn't a forever vaccine, and so you need to continue to update it. And for a significant number of people only had one vaccine or only the first two doses and haven't had the most recent uh, uptake on this most recent vaccine has been really, really, really slow. Probably still under Yeah, 10%. Terry, I, Terry, I would. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope, that's it. Oh, I was just going to echo that there's even, to be honest, an apathy in the healthcare provider community. We've had the lowest uptake of our flu campaign. We'll normally get 88 to 92% of our staff um, to, to take flu. We require either the flu vaccine or a declination from it. And pre-COVID, uh, we would require masking of those folks who declined. They were certainly entitled not to take it, but we have good evidence that shows that healthcare workers can be a vector for influenza that's been around for a decade. So we had that in place and we had really strong uh, flu uptake program. We are tired, honestly. And even those who know the data and the science that it may not protect you from getting it, that it will decrease your risk of death from it and decrease your risk of hospitalization uh, from it as well. Uh, we've had a lot harder time um, just getting folks to uh, to take it. So we were in the upper 70s to low 80s, and then we just made another recent push to try to bump it up even amongst our own um, staff at the hospital. So um, I think it's just so, kind of big picture fatigue. In the general population, is there any kind of percent on what the percentage of uh, vaccination is, rate of vaccination? Terry, I haven't looked. Have you looked at all in just the general data? I've just been tracking what we've been trying to do at the hospital as it relates to influenza. General data has been that it's pretty been pretty slow. Uh, it's yeah. like if, if you decide you want to go get it at the high V, you just pick a time tomorrow you want to have it and walk in and get it. Uh, it it's really pretty open. Uh, it, but that's that that's really because so many people have never had influenza. I've had influenza a couple times, and uh, one of the things I used to tell people is if you can remember having influenza, you didn't have influenza. You had a cold. Uh, it's, it's not a pleasant experience. But is there any kind of numbers as far as how many doses? It's the exact same them? analogy because I have paid. I was going to say, I don't have numbers, but I can uh, find out um, and we can, I can send it out to the group. Okay. So what, how do you get those numbers though? Because like, so like Dr. Morris said, it's like I went to Costco and, and signed up through their portal and walked in and yep. the pharmacist gave me my shot and I walked away. I, 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 so I'd have to see what's being reported to the state, okay. um, which not every not every shot is necessarily put into show me vax um, and reported in, but most of them should be. And so we can check to see with the state and what they have. It'll be close. Yeah, I was going to say most healthcare institutions are obligated to do some basic reporting because we obviously track uh, vaccine adverse events. And in order to be able to do that and follow up, uh, the, the CDC usually uses um, those databases like um, the state based one. So, um, again, people may not end up doing it, but generally speaking, to answer your question, that's usually where they pull the administration data from as far as just numbers of vaccinated was out of the databases used to track for adverse events.
any other updates? I, I want to honor people's time here. I appreciate the conversation on. It, it sounds like it's be a challenging cold and flu and RSV and COVID season for for all of our healthcare folks. Do we know if there's going to be kind of a, and this is kind of a big picture, kind of a recalibrating people's attitudes towards vaccines? There, there's been a pretty good <laughs> campaign against it. Uh, is there going to be some kind of counter to that? Uh, it, the data is interesting. The United States is is unique amongst uh, uh, nations of similar size and income and education, uh, and that we have the lowest vaccination rate of any of those countries. Uh, we're somewhere in the 60th uh, or so uh, down on the list of countries that people have vaccines that are available to them. Uh, there's not really a, a way to comment on that without getting into trouble, so. Sure. I can tell you that the CDC and the state of Missouri are constantly launching new campaigns on trying to get vaccination upticks. Um, the city shares different materials, which have, um, you know, varying responses. I nothing seems to really be affecting those that have decided already what they want to do. Sure. So on that happy note, <laughs> I would, Christine, anything else you would like to share? It would, it, if there's nothing else, I don't I want to honor people's time and I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I have nothing more. I make a motion to adjourn. All those favors, if I say aye. 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 Hey, folks, thank you. Hey, happy holidays to everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, to all of you as well. Be safe out there. Take care. <laughs> wear your mask. Bye-bye. Yeah, wear your Bye -bye. mask. <laughs>